Hi everyone, it's Tom from Permission to Travel and today I'm going to talk with you about some cruising stuff and we are going to go deeper into the myths about cruising. I uh, have been asked a lot of questions over the past few months over cruising on people's concerns that they have and a lot of times the concerns are kind of rooted in a myth um, and so today we're going to go and talk about them and debunk some of them and talk about some of the myths that are out there for cruising. So the first one is that cruises are very crowded. Um, so that depends on the cruise line, that depends on the size of the cruise, so they can feel crowded. Uh, the bigger ships tend to have more stuff to do, so it keeps people spread out. Uh, the smaller ships, they have less people, so there's less to do, but there's also less people, so there tends to be less crowding. A lot of the times you'll see crowding centered around food, and you'll see it centered around entertainment or any of the free activities on board, but the lines usually move really fast. I haven't really had to stand online for long periods of time for anything across the like 12 to 13 cruises that I've done now. So I've noticed and have never really had a complaint about cruises being crowded before. Uh, next one is that uh, cruises tend to attract an older crowd. While yes, that's true for some cruise lines and some cruises, uh, the longer cruises tend to pull in the older crowd um, because you know people need to get time off from work and stuff like that. So you tend to see more retired people on the longer cruises. Uh, but a lot of cruise lines are trying to focus in on pulling families in, kind of going towards the younger crowd. As an example, Royal Caribbean has a new ship coming out this summer called Utopia of the Seas, and it is focused on weekends. Uh, and so it's pulling in families, pulling in people for like kind of trying out cruising and doing weekend cruising just to kind of see if you like it. Um, they're trying to focus in on families and doing stuff that pulls in the younger crowds. So the, I would say that it tends to be trending down, the age tends to be trending down, and so that's something for, uh, for definitely that is not true anymore. Uh, next are that cruises are dangerous. Um, well, yes, whenever we travel, there are dangers that can happen. Um, the concern tends to set, be centered around, you know, rogue waves or problems with ships or anything like that. Uh, overall, cruising is very safe and we only see the negative stuff or the bad stuff that happens because that's what's reported on the news. But there are hundreds of cruises that go out and very rarely do we see any major incidents or anything like that. So overall, cruising is safe. Uh, again, there's inherent danger to any travel, anything that we do, and so we always have to trust our gut and make sure that we're following and doing the things that will keep us safe, um, but overall, cruising is, is not dangerous. Um, next one is that um, cruises will not have enough to do and you will get bored. And that is the exact opposite of what I've seen every cruise I've ever been on. There's been tons of stuff to do. There's been lots of ways to keep yourself busy. There are shows, uh, there's entertainment, there's free activities. Um, Royal Caribbean has uh, rock climbing walls. There's tons of pools. Uh, there's sur uh, simulated surfing. There's uh, bumper cars. There's lots of stuff to do. So actually, cruises keep you busy. Um, I would say that I'm actually usually busier doing stuff on a cruise ship on at sea days, but I tend to really do keep myself busy when I'm on cruises. I've never gotten bored on a cruise and all the cruises I've done, so that would for sure be something where as long as you want to go out and do those activities, do those things, you'll be good. Um, next one is that um, cruises tend to have a lot of kids, um, which is... True and false at the same time. This one I can't really say that we're debunking, um, but for sure there are a lot of kids on cruises. I will definitely say the cruise lines that I've been on do a really, really good job of keeping the kids busy and having activities for them and areas for them to go. And every cruise that I've ever been on has had an adults only section uh, where there's, it's 18 plus. Some of the cruise lines at 16 plus, but usually it's 18 plus uh, where you have to be that age to get into that section and there's no kids in the area at all. I would say from my experiences, uh, Royal Caribbean and Disney tend to have the most kids, uh, but I really feel like they do a lot to keep them busy. Uh, so it's not necessarily that there are too many kids, it's just finding that one where um, if you don't want a lot of kids, then you find one that doesn't really cater to kids. So like Virgin Voyages is for 21 plus. So that's something where there would be no kids at all. Um, and then you would look at, you know, Royal Caribbean and Disney would tend to have a few more kids. And then if you look at like celebrity cruises, there are kids that are on it, but not a lot. So you have to kind of research your cruise lines, look and see which ones would be the best fit for you uh, and go from there. Um, next one is that cruise ships only leave from Florida. Um, so as far as the U.S. goes, 
Uh, it is not true at all. Um, there are tons and tons of ports where stuff leaves out of. There are ones that leave out of Los Angeles. We have New Orleans, uh, Galveston, Texas. Um, there's some that leave out of South Carolina. There's some that leave, come out north. I know Boston has a few ships up there. Uh, New York, New Jersey area has some. And so there's a lot of ports uh, that up and down the East Coast and on the West Coast. Seattle is another one that's out on the West Coast. And so uh, there are a lot of ports, a lot of areas uh, where they leave from. So it's not always just Florida. Um, and so you just have to, again, research where uh, you want to leave out of. Uh, I always say if you can, if you live near a port or you can leave from an area that there are ships coming out of, it tends to be way cheaper because then you don't have to focus on being able to go and drive or fly or anything like that. You can just kind of go to your port wherever it's at and then go from there. Um, next one is that uh, people party the whole time and people are just drunk the whole time all over the boat. Uh, so not true. Um, obviously, people drink. Um, but I've never run into any experiences where somebody was overly drunk or there was a bad experience or I felt uncomfortable because people were drunk and partying the whole time. There are obviously cruise lines that um, are considered more of the party cruise lines. And so if you don't want to be around the party or louder cruise lines, then you want to stay away from those. So an example that it always says is Carnival Cruise. Carnival Cruise lines tend to be a little bit louder um, and a little bit more party-esque. Uh, so that's something if you don't want that then you would stay away from carnival So again, like I said before you always want to make sure you're researching your cruise lines looking at what people say Look at the reviews things like that so that you can make your best bet, but no people are not partying the whole time um, And so after that is all you can do in the ports of shop So I get asked all the time things that you can do in the different ports and what's available um, And the first question is always is it just shopping? Uh, so not true. Uh, every cruise line uh, offers shore excursions and offers ways to go out and do things. So you can do uh, swimming with dolphins. You can do uh, one of my favorite things I've ever done was in Belize and it was uh, cave tubing. And so I had so much fun cave tubing. I'm actually going to be doing it again next year. Um, and so that's something that's really cool. Uh, and so many different things that you can do. You can go explore the, out of their cities. You can do stuff through the cruise line. You can do stuff on your own. Uh, but there's so many different things that you can do based off of whatever port it is. Another big thing to research is that um, you want to make sure you're researching your ports, looking at what's available in each one and where you feel like you would want to do or what you want to do. Um, there is obviously shopping in the ports. So it's not that there's no shopping. Um, it's just that they're not, that's not the only thing to do. You might have to travel a little bit, but shopping is not the only thing to do. Um, another big concern that I get from people is that they're going to feel like they're trapped on board, kind of trigger that claustrophobia. Uh, yes, it feels like you can be trapped on board when you have your at-sea days. Uh, and you're on the boat. There's nothing else that you can do. You're just out in the open water. And uh, what people usually tend to do for that is they tend to get out of their room more. And so that's why I always say that the room that you get is not always the biggest piece. You just want to make sure you get a whole cruise line or cruise ship that's going to fit your best needs. Because if you do that, then you're going to be able to focus in on that and be able to get out. Uh, I always tend to go out, go to shows, go to things like that, go walking around the ship. Um, some of the newer Royal Caribbean ships have a park area that you can go to with real trees and you can get to go do stuff like that. Um, and so that's something that's actually really important. And so um, if you're uncomfortable with that and you don't want to do a lot of sea days and you are afraid that you're going to feel trapped, then you want to look at those itineraries that are going to have less sea days and it's going to be more port intensive where you're going to go to a port every day instead of having where it's a port and then two days later you have another one. So you're going to want to research your itineraries, look at what's available on the ship, uh, but feeling trapped on board, it's only those at sea days where you can't get off, uh, but most cruise lines, most itineraries are fairly port intensive because they want you to go from the ports and get out and do stuff. And so that's something that uh, is very common to see. The next one is uh, getting sick. Um, and I'm talking more sick, sick, so like neurovirus, things like that. Um, so I don't have the exact research in front of me, but it's actually more common to get neurovirus when you're at home or back where you live than it is to get on a cruise ship. The only reason why we hear it more is because it gets reported because the cruise lines have to report it to uh, the country that they're originated from and then that gets reported on the news. So we always see when norovirus is happening, but it actually is not as common as you would think. Like I said before, there are tons and tons and tons, hundreds of cruises out there. And so, you know, there's only a small handful that get it and it's actually considered fairly rare to get norovirus or any major sickness while you're on a cruise ship. 
Of course, you want to make sure you take those precautions. So everywhere you go where there's food, they have hand sanitizers, they have sinks to wash your hands with, you know, soap and water. You want to make sure you're doing that just to be safe because, you know, you don't want to spread anything or get anything yourself. And so it's always just better to follow those safety precautions, but the odds and chances of getting norovirus are actually fairly slim. Uh, following up on that is motion sickness and seasickness. Um, I have said in a previous video that I tend to get that. Um, and so the big thing is, you know, it's not guaranteed that you'll get it. I don't get it for every cruise that I'm on. I would say out of the 12 to 13 cruises I've done, I've had it pretty bad for about three of them. Um, and that's because it was stormy and the waters were choppy. And so I had to do the things to kind of do those precautions for myself. Um, I will be doing a motion sickness video later on down the road, uh, just to kind of talk about some of the things that I do. Uh, but motion sickness and seasickness is something that can happen for sure. Um, but it's something where it's not as common as you would think. I know more people that don't get it than do. And if you do, you want to make sure you're doing your patches. You want to make sure you're doing your C bands, have ginger with you, any type of thing like that to eliminate that chance of getting overly sick. Um, next one after that is that you have to get dressed up when you're on a cruise ship. So while yes, every cruise line and every ship for the most part has a dress up night or dressing your best or a formal night or whatever you want to call it, um, you don't have to get dressed up. There are other venues or other ways that you can go and eat. So if it's a dress up night, then you can choose to go to the buffet where you don't have to dress up or you can go and do one of the food stands that they have somewhere where you don't have to be dressed up. So it's your choice whether you want to get dressed up or not um, and how formal you want. Um, a lot of cruise lines are pushing away from the full formal nights and they're doing more of a dressing your best. Um, and so you choose what you want to go in. So for the dressing your best days, I tend to do like a polo. Uh, or a button-down shirt and some khakis and um, you know my female friends tend to do uh, slacks um, and just a nice shirt and so you choose what you want to do and uh, there are definitely times where I do not want to bring any clothes with me so I did not bring the dress-up clothes um, so I just skipped the formal nights and went and did all the other stuff it kind of helps with packing because you don't have to pack extra stuff and then it kind of helps you with saving space so I tend to not do the dress-up nights anymore um, it's been years since I've done one um, next after that is you can't cruise by yourself and that would probably be the furthest from the truth. So it's really popular right now to do solo cruising. It is really, really popular so much so that cruise lines are actually starting to offer solo cabins and deals. The only thing that costs you with solo travel and solo cruising is there's a lot of time supplements and so you have to pay for a double occupancy. So there are times where there's a room that you're getting that has two people and so you would have to pay for both people. It's called a single supplement. And so you have to be careful and look at how much a cruise line charges for that. There are cruise lines that will have deals. Uh, so I will actually be doing a cruise next year on Avalon Waterways where the single supplement was way for me. And so I am doing a solo cruise on, a, on the Danube River and I did not have to pay the single supplement. Some of them, as you cruise with them more, the percentage that you pay for the single supplement goes down. Uh, so it all depends on that. And then if you get a solo cabin, um, sometimes they're called studio cabins, uh, they tend to, or don't have the single supplement because it's just meant for one person. So that's one thing to look at. Another part to that is people getting comfortable with the eating and interacting with others and stuff like that. And the one thing that I absolutely love about cruising is just that you choose what you want to do. Uh, if you don't want to go to the main dining room and have strangers sitting with you at the table, you can do that. If you want to go in and meet new people and make friends, you can go to the bars, you can go to the main dining, you can go and do those things. I tend to kind of mix and match. I will do the main dining room sometimes, get to know some people, make some friends, so I have people that I can see and hang out with and stuff. And then there are other times where I turn around and just kind of hermit myself off and read in the adults only section and then go to the buffet or do something on my own. So it really comes down to what you want to do and what your preference is, but it's actually becoming really popular to do solo cruising. I'm going to be doing a series coming up very soon on some solo travel, whether it's cruises or whether it's uh, some land-based travel. So look, for, look forward to that and we will be getting to that probably sometime in the next few weeks. Uh, after that, then we have I Can't Afford a Cruise. Uh, cruising can be expensive. Uh, and the sticker shock and seeing the price of everything can be very overwhelming for people. And I get that. Uh, the one thing that I always point out is that for the most part, cruising is all inclusive. So you're able to get certain drinks. You can't get all. So alcohol is not included. Most cruise lines, soda is not included. So there's certain things that you do have to buy, but you have your waters, your coffees, your teas, orange juice. They tend to be included in all of that. And so that's part of the inclusion. 
uh, cruise lines will have their main dining room is free and, well, free and included. And so uh, they will tend to point you towards that and towards the free stuff. Um, there will be specialty dining rooms, uh, those ones you will have to pay extra for. Um, but it's included in all of that. So you don't have to pack and unpack. It's in, the hotel's included, your transportation uh, sometimes is included. Again, depends on your cruise line um, and you go from there. So what I would say is that yes, the sticker price, this, there's that sticker shock, but at the same time, number one, if you book it well in advance, you get to pay it over time. So you don't have to pay it all at once. Uh, what I tend to do is book them years out and then I just pay them over time. So I actually just booked some stuff for 2026. And so I'm just gonna pay it off over time uh, to kind of help kind of spread out the, the price and cost of it. And then other thing is again, research it. There are cruise lines that are more expensive. There are ones that are less expensive. So you look at what fits into your budget and what you wanna do and what's included in each one. Some cruise lines include more, some don't. As an example, Disney includes soda with theirs. Um, and so that's not included. And so you don't have to do a package or anything extra for that. Um, so that is something to definitely look into and research again when you're researching those cruise lines. That's a big thing to do. Uh, next one is that you can't eat healthy when you're on a cruise ship. You just eat unhealthy foods and fattening foods the whole time and you, you just eat all the time and you gain a lot of weight. Um, that is kind of true because you choose what you want to eat, um, but there are healthy options. There are vegetarian options, there are vegan options, there are gluten-free options, there are salads, there are definitely things within the menus that you're able to. So they don't necessarily tend to have one restaurant that's specifically for healthiness, uh, but what they tend to do is have that within each menu and you just choose what you want from there so you can kind of eat healthier and stick to your diet, do the things that you want to do and make sure that you're following that. But overall, it's probably not the healthiest place and thing to do in the world, but you control your diet, you control what you eat and you can go through and choose and go from there. Final one, and probably the most important one, is that you don't need to get travel insurance. I will say this over and over and over and over again, make sure you're getting travel insurance. Uh, it's so important to get travel insurance, especially if you're going international. Travel insurance uh, will cover a lot of the different things, a lot of the different areas for medical stuff. If we miss the boat for cruising, if we miss a flight, uh, if a flight gets delayed or canceled, it will help us reimburse us for things, uh, things like that. So we just have to make sure that we're following through on that. But travel insurance is so important. Big thing is, is to research your travel insurance and each policy. So each one offers different things. They have certain inclusions and things that are not included with uh, the medical insurance piece. So for example, if you book it too far after you purchase the vacation or the cruise, you won't be able to get your pre-existing conditions included. But if you do it within so many weeks, and again, each travel insurance company is different, but within so many weeks, and you can actually get your pre-existing conditions included. Some you have to pay extra for it. Some it's included if you do it within that time frame. Just have to look and see what you want. But travel insurance is so, so very important, especially for cruising, because you can get your port fees reimbursed. If a port has to be skipped, you can get lots of things reimbursed back to you if you go from there. So uh, those are the top uh, questions and myths that I get a lot of times with uh, cruising and stuff like that. So um, hopefully some point of this was helpful for you. Uh, please like, please subscribe, please if I left any myths out or if you have any questions, uh, leave some comments, uh, point out any of these myths that you didn't know, uh, myths that you did know and you wanted to add something in. There was some extra feedback in there for me and I'm more than happy to talk and kind of interact with everybody and help you there. So I will be coming at you much more often. We actually hit a uh, thousand subscribers already. Um, so thank you everybody. Uh, and we will continue to go from there. So I hope that you have a great day. I hope that your travels are wonderful and I will come to you soon. All right, thanks everybody.